What's up guys, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoots and today I have probably the easiest, most simple tutorial on how to create closed captions for YouTube or any other platform for that matter. This will be using a separate free open source software that you can get from the description down below, which I'll show you how to use, but if you're interested in creating closed or open captions, the difference is open captions are burned into the video itself, then make sure to click the link down in the description below if you're interested in learning how to create captions with Premiere Pro. Anyways, head to the first link in the description down below and download Subtitle Edit. All you need to do is click the link and then at the very top you'll see Releases with a number next to it. Click on it, scroll down and then download the first zip SE followed by a version number dot zip. The description of the different files are up here. They're all portable except FL contains Finnish dictionaries and PL contains Polish dictionaries, but we're only interested in the English one. So simply click the first link, which is se3510.zip currently. Once it's opened up in the zip editor of your choice, I'm using 7-zip, simply make a new folder somewhere and extract it. I'll make a folder on my desktop called subtitles. Drag and drop everything out, close the zip explorer, and then simply run subtitleedit.exe. I'm going to go ahead and make it full screen, and you'll be greeted by something like this. Next, I'll be heading across to my drive, holding most of my videos that I'm currently working on, and we'll be creating uh, captions for a new video of mine titled PC Wake here. Simply drag and drop the video file or audio file of choice into the big black box on the right hand side, which is a Windows media player. If we skip through it with the play bar at the bottom, you may see that the video is black, doesn't work at all, doesn't have sound. Here's the sound bar, just so you know. But this is a very simple issue that's easy to fix. At the very top, hit Options, Settings, head across to the Video Player tab, and inside of here you'll see Direct Show and VLC Media Player. If the VLC Media Player option is blanked out for you, make sure to head to the link in the description down below and download VLC Media Player. In the top right, it says 64-bit. If you're using a 32-bit PC, it'll probably say that up here. Just make sure you download the VLC Media Player version that matches this. I had 32-bit on a 64-bit PC, and it didn't let me pick the option. I had to close the program, install 64-bit VLC, and then I was able to choose this option. Once you've done that, hit OK. You'll see that the video will go black and come back. Then if you hit play, click number here for troubleshoot and time it started. It might say fixed feature, but you can hear the video in its entirety. So let's just go back to the beginning. And at the bottom, you see a click to add waveform tab. Simply click anywhere in this box and you'll see that it starts to generate a waveform. This is a visual representation of the audio. Obviously, if you've worked with creating video before, you know exactly what this is. So clicking anywhere here will place your playhead. And by pressing spacebar, exactly you can find out. You can see exactly what you're listening to as the playhead moves. So we'll simply drag the slider at the bottom to the very beginning. And then next up, you need to know how to scroll. So scrolling up scrolls forward in time and scrolling down scrolls up backwards in time. Holding control, scrolling down zooms out and holding control, scrolling up zooms in. So let's get it to a comfortable size and head to the beginning of the video. So this is going to be a lot easier if you have a transcript prepared, which is basically just writing out the entire video and text beforehand. I don't have that, so I'll be creating it as we go. Simply go to the beginning and hit What's play. Up guys, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot. And listen to the first sentence or so that you'll be typing out. Next, there's a couple of things that you can do. Head across to the Create tab from the Translate tab on the far left. And when you hit F9, you'll create a new subtitle that takes up this amount of time. I don't have to click anything. I can simply just begin typing. So, what's up guys? Tech Nobo here for troubleshoot. Done, it's as simple as that. You can see that the text up at the top went red. This means that it is too long for your normal standards. All you need to do is hit auto BR, which breaks it up into two lines. Great, now that we've done that, we can simply drag this to wherever we need it to be. So let's add it to the beginning and you can shorten it by grabbing the end and dragging it back. If we hit F10, it will play it just before text. So what's up guys, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoots and today I've got a video. You can hear that here is where the subtitle should change to the next sentence. So there's a couple ways of doing it. 
Either you can manually move the previous one around to end at the right time, and then hit F9 to add a new one. I won't be doing that. I'll be doing it my way, which is hitting Control Z to undo that. Select the last subtitle that played. This is quite important. Unless you already still have it selected. Simply go to where you want it to end and the next one to begin. Hit F12 to bring the end of the previous one up to here. And then hit F9 to add a new subtitle. Let's quickly listen to what this sounds like. And today I've got a video for you explaining how exactly... So I'll say... And today I've got a video explaining how to. And you can see that not only has the text gone red, meaning that it is taking up too much space. Let's just simply hit auto BR to break it into two lines. Next, you'll see that the duration is also red. This happens when the characters per second is higher than I think about 15. What does this mean? This means that readers will have exactly one second to read what is on screen. If your caption ends long before you're done talking, you can simply reverse and listen to it. And today I've got a video for you explaining how Here is where I begin the next part of the sentence. So I'll simply hit F12 to bring it up to here. If it's still red, then it's still a bit fast for most people to read. You may want to go a bit further forwards until the duration is no longer red. You can of course also drag it to the right amount of time. So let's say that we have the first one selected and we hit F12 somewhere up here you'll see that it overlaps our second one, and this can be very bad for a lot of players. You can't have more than one caption at the same time. To fix this, we simply just need to select the one with the end time greater than the next one's start time, and then drag it back ever so slightly. You can see that as soon as I drag it forwards or backwards, it snaps to the perfect place. That is because you can't overlap these in the editor. Great feature. So let's say that you're not a fan of using keyboard shortcuts. Let's skip ahead to this sentence over here. What the heck your PC is doing? So let's quickly select what the heck your PC is doing. Right click. And here's where you can add text from clipboard. If you have a transcription file, you can copy and paste a sentence directly into here. I don't have this, so I'll click add text here. And you can see that it does the exact same thing that we've been doing the whole time. It hypothetically presses F9 at the beginning, goes to the end and presses F12. This way you can do it with your mouse without having to remember keyboard shortcuts. As soon as you've clicked that, you don't need to click anything else. You can just simply start typing straight away. Now, I haven't learned all of the keyboard shortcuts for this, but this has helped me get through many hours of footage already and create very useful, usable subtitles. If you're ready to spend some time learning the software further, simply go to the options at the very top, settings, and then shortcuts. Inside of here is a lot of information that can help speed you up a huge amount. I'm not going to dive into that to keep this video nice and short, but that is the simplest free way to create subtitles, closed captions for your YouTube videos or anything else for that matter. To get this out of the software, all you need to do is hit the save button up at the top, and you'll be asked where you want to save it. It saves as an SRT file, which you can later upload to YouTube. So I'll just save it here, head back to my G drive, refresh. Here's the SRT file. If I open it with Notepad, you can see that it's using the standard SRT notation, the caption number, the caption time and length, and then the caption itself right below. Cool, so you can go ahead and upload this directly to YouTube or do whatever else you need. To preview it in something like VLC Media Player, simply open up your video and it should automatically pick up the SRT file if it's named the same as the video. If it doesn't, then simply drag and drop it into the playing video and you'll see that the text pops up on screen. If you edit the SRT file while VLC Media Player is playing it, it won't update dynamically, you'll have to drag and drop it in again or close the file and reopen it. So anyways, I hope this helped you guys create really simple captions really quickly and give you a bit of a head start. If you'd like to see how to do this with Premiere Pro, then make sure to click the link down in the description below or click the card that you saw earlier on screen by hitting the I in the top right hand side and clicking the card from there. Thanks for watching. My name is me, Technobo here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao.